Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Ambassador Bhadra Kumar and we are going to discuss the seizure of the Iranian owned tanker. According to reports, uh, this appears to be an Iranian tanker. It was not a Panama registry, though there are other parties involved in the complex ownership. It seems to be Iranian tanker and a and Iranian oil, though whether it's fuel oil or it's light oil is still under discussion. How do you see the seizure? Because A, it is not that UK which has seized the ship. They have sanctions against export from Iran. In fact, they're explicitly on record saying that they would not like to be a party to the American sanctions. So how, what explains this seizure and the talk about it is that this is a EU, EU sanctions on Syria, but EU does not have sanctions for Syria to receive oil. So how do you look at this? Yeah, you know, this is uh, in terms of uh, international law, uh, this, is, uh, and, uh, this is not justifiable at all. Mm? It's an act of piracy? Uh, Equivalent. I think, you know, it is, uh, it is basically what is taking place is that like, you know, Iranian foreign minister Zarif mentioned once that there is a B team working, you know, uh, B team means Walton, BB, that is Netanyahu and the two bin, <laughs> bin, uh, bin Salman, uh, bin bin Salman and Bin Said, you know, so he called it the B team. Uh, I think this is all uh, like uh, now uh, another story had come on the drone thing, drone uh, thing. There was another spy plane going along. So now the uh, picture that is emerging is that it was to simply to, uh, you know, when a thing like this comes, the radar stations become alive. So they wanted to know where the radar stations were on the Iranian coast, you know. So they all got lighted up, as they say in the technical jargon. So uh, this immediately the other spy plane monitored. So they know the locations of the radar stations on the coast, you know. So a lot of things, you know, they are setting up a lot of uh, situations to see to what extent Iran will react. And I think this is, um, this is not exactly attributable to Trump. Uh, it, this is more to be attributed to the B team kind of thing. Like, you know, in Britain, for example, the British intelligence uh, has got its own game to play. Uh, on this Iran question that is in league with the uh, sections of the American security establishment and so on um, with Israel and all that. Uh, I don't know whether we can look for uh, a uh, justification in terms of international law. Uh, you correctly said that there is no sanctions against uh, Syria getting Syria oil. receiving oil. Receiving oil. And uh, there are no uh, British sanctions against Iran. There of are no UN oil. sanctions against Iran. It's only that Trump has some sanctions against Iran. And there again, Trump has only told third countries not to pick up oil from Iran. But uh, Trump has not uh, cared to stop. So I think in this particular one, you see what has happened is, if Iranian oil is uh, stopped at the high seas, what will be the Iranian reaction? Because there are uh, here, you know, these are moving parts today. And uh, when, if uh, push comes to shove, and if there's a, when the crunch time comes, the Iranian behavioral pattern, this has not been tested before, because this sort of a, sit conf a standoff. Uh, what will Iran do? It has potential to hit back, will it? Or will it lose nerve? You know, this is the kind of thing I think that is going on. And I have a feeling that this is more to do with uh, intelligence agencies. And yeah, but you know, uh, Mr. Bhadra Kumar, irrespective of who within the government does mm. this, mm. the reality is that the governments are responsible. Governments you cannot, are we cannot yeah. say yeah. that the security establishment, the commando, uh, basically the soldiers from the British uh, Army, participate in a seizure of a vehicle, mm -hmm. of a tanker. And that is, the, we are going to discuss yeah. whether it was done with Mr. Hunt's. Uh, you know, Prabir, you know, I said this because um, uh, the important point is therefore, let me conclude, is the Iranian reaction to it. 
The reaction hasn't come from the political level. The reaction has come from the commander of the IRGC. And he has said that Iran will retaliate against a British tanker. That's right. That is, that is what it has. So, you know, they, they are trying to see to what extent Iran can be pushed. Because, you know, this waterway is actually Iranian water. And they have a jurisdiction over the water. So, uh, if they are pushed, will they actually carry out this threat? We'll talk to the Straits you know, of Hormuz. Strait of Hormuz, yes. you know. So, yeah. this is a, so, I think this is what is taking place is a kind of a shadow play. You know, I ultimately, I, I, I it is Britain which has done it. You can't say I British agree with you, did it. You know, yeah. But the point is, if the British government felt that the spy agencies had done something which wasn't really fully justified, this has come to the court in Gibraltar because mm -hmm. they have to, within three days of seizure, mm -hmm. they have to give documents. The Gibraltar court now has given them another 14 days. Mm -hmm. So legally, that UK has a way to gracefully withdraw from it, saying we have checked everything and yes, it was not violating the EU sanctions mm -hmm. and we let them go. So they're not doing that. And the fact they're not doing that would seem to indicate maybe there is at the moment a lame duck government in UK because the next uh, prime minister has yet to be decided. Or it is a tacit support to what the Americans are asking. And uh, therefore, shall we say, a step further thinking that Iran can be pushed or if, if Iran cannot be, if Iran retaliates, then that becomes a cause for war, causes belly or whatever it's called in legal terms. You see, seventh uh, is coming. And uh, I saw yesterday Velayati, who's a very key figure in the Iranian leadership, is advisor to the Supreme Leader, former foreign minister and all. Uh, he has uh, hindered, he has said categorically that the level of enrichment is going to go up. And there's no reason to. Enrichment, uh, not only the amount, but the, the stockpile is there. Stockpile is already exceeded the one which is, uh, so there was a ceiling a put by the exceeded. deal. It has exceeded that. But now, you know, the level of enrichment will From go up. 3.67%, which was the limit mm -hmm. under the J JCPOA, mm -hmm. they're going to increase it beyond that. Yeah, That's beyond, beyond that. He has said it. So now, uh, this is a very big challenge, in fact, you know, to, uh, the, uh, to, to Trump. So uh, he will have to be acting uh, on this, you know. So uh, I have a feeling that this British action on the tanker uh, couldn't have been a British action. This would have been, the Americans would have been certainly it behind been, it. Yeah, the strings and and, and they would like to know because, you know, the point is if Iran overreacts, for example, Iranians also would be calculating. If they overreact, the other side could come like a ton of bricks. It can be used as a pretext. So, you know, it's a, it's a very dangerous situation because it's basically it is what brinkmanship, you know. It is brinkmanship and always the chances, like in the First World War, mm -hmm. nobody wanted Can, that yeah, war. Yeah. And it started as a very of, innocuous yeah, issue. Spin out really. of control. And in Part this particular control. one, uh, it's quite clear now uh, Trump's uh, uh, statements, the recent statements, if you take it again, he has reiterated that he is uh, not, uh, he spoke about Iran in his um, interview with Fox News after the Osaka G20. Huh? There he has said again, as far as he is concerned, the situation is uh, quite satisfactory the way it is. And uh, he is confident that uh, Iranians will be willing to negotiate. And we will come to that and all that. And he uh, made it very clear that he is not looking for a war. He's, Use that interview, in fact, to but reiterate but that point. You know, huh? Mr. Madrigo, but the problem that Iran has mm. is that even if the United States doesn't look for a war, mm -hmm. but they are holding the cards mm -hmm. in a non-war-like situation mm -hmm. because Iran cannot export oil. Mm -hmm. It cannot import. No, I agree. I am not coming to that. So therefore, the no. strangulation of Iran continues. No, no, I am unless Iran uh, is able to do. No, so. that's a different thing, Prabir. I, I, I was not at all uh, alluding to that. What I'm trying to say is that, you know, that therefore, uh, I am not very sure even whether, you know, this is with uh, Trump's uh, knowledge, this project, this, this, this particular Gibraltar incident. project, uh, because there are a number of people, uh, hardliners in the American camp, 
and uh, I'm sure some of them are league in, uh, they, they have their own connections with Britain and so on. And Britain has played this sort of dirty role uh, historically, you know, for the Americans, which is why they're called poodles. You know, they do this kind of roles. And uh, that is to really to precipitate a situation, one, to know the Iranian reaction, and two, to sort of uh, push, uh, to leave uh, uh, Trump with no alternative, but to sanction a kind of a military move. Uh, do you think Iran has a possibility of retaliation either as a further tanker war, which is what Iran-Iraq war had at that point created, or do you think Iran could actually use the Houthis, arm them better, because they're already in a war against Saudi Arabia and United Arab Emirates, do you think they could actually supply the Houthis with better weapons and uh, essentially with rockets and so on? And that would actually be one of the ways they could react. I think the Iranians in this particular one, my own uh, judgment is, you know, that the Iranians in this particular case will not want it to be escalating uh, to one of, uh, you know, regional dimension or anything like this. Britain has done something illegal, uh, which has no justification and Britain will pay the price for it. And uh, then, you know, they, they, they have a standing that this is not a NATO problem. This is not Germany's problem. This is not Italy's problem. This is Britain's problem. And uh, uh, Britain and Iran have dealt with each other for centuries. And uh, the uh, Iranians know how to tackle the British, you know. And at a certain point, they know very well that the British will climb down you know, when they find that they are all alone uh, in, in this business. Because you see, they are also overstretched in the Gulf. And uh, you don't have to go for Houthis or anything. They're just next across the Straits of Hormuz. The British are there. So anything can happen. That is why I said that they're trying to see whether they will hit a British warship, for example. The statement from the Iranian side is this, that, you know, that there will be uh, retaliation. retaliation on a British tanker. So uh, it's marked. And I think that is going to be the reaction. They will not go, go for a proxy war on this. This is done to Iran and Iran will do something to the party which did this to Iran. The proxy thing all comes if there is an attack on Iran. If there is an attack on Iran, Iran has stated that uh, the side which starts a war will not be able to end that war. But coming out to the scenario, you would agree that the tanker seizure has actually increased the tension even more. So we don't see any countervailing, uh, uh, shall we say, things happening on the ground. I'm not talking about what people may be saying. Uh, as you said, tr President Trump indicated in Fox News that uh, he doesn't really want war. But nevertheless, the situation on the ground, any, anything which yeah, looks you see, at... Uh, what is uh, apparent today is this, that attention has now, we began discussing this aspect. This has become the centerpiece of the discussion, the tanker thing. But this is not the centerpiece we know well. That is f what Iran is going to do on the 7th, because effectively it will be walking out of the nuclear deal. Correct. And then, what is it that Trump can do? You see, and Iran's position is that under the deal, there is a provision which says that if all parties do not observe this, the, their, their commitments, and they fulfill their commitments, then Iran is free to exercise uh, its options. So what Iran does is perfectly justifiable. Europeans are not fulfilling. Americans have walked out. And now this deal is unilaterally Iran should fulfill this uh, deal. Absolutely. So Iran is justified in doing that. And then secondly, Iran also says that the moment those other parties start fulfilling their obligations. They will reverse this. They will revert and the status quo ante would be restored. In fact, they have said but they've given you 60 weeks yeah. to show us. 60 days. In fact, it started, I think, May last yeah, year. Yeah, it'll be over now. Made last year, Trump and Trump pulled out. Hmm. We have given you so many yeah, more than yeah, a year yeah, yeah. to keep your side of the bargain. We put you under notice that if you don't do it in X number of days, 60 days, then we will be pulling out of the 
history, we will be pulling out of those provisions of the treaty, which we had written in the treaty itself. We had said Iran's position is if nuclear related sanctions takes place, then we will not observe these limits. So this was there. In fact, that is a yeah, treaty position. So you know what I was saying is that you know that uh, this uh, operation in uh, Gibraltar can as well be seen this way that it is a big distraction. The uh, now the talk is about a particular incident which has taken place. Not the bigger issue. Not the bigger issue because on the bigger issue. Uh, I was actually waiting to see what is going to be the American reaction to it or the European reaction to it. Now, if you remember, uh, Angela Merkel, um, uh, Macron, and uh, Theresa May, they had uh, written jointly a letter to the Iranians warning them not to do this, that if they do this, there will be serious consequences. They have said that they are going to do it, and I have no doubt in my mind they are going to do it day after tomorrow. Now, if they have done it, then what do they do? Because they have no local stand in this. You know, the Europeans are observing the US sanctions. Absolutely. This is the whole issue that the so called instex transaction mm -hmm. mechanism, mm -hmm. which they have created bypassing SWIFT, mm -hmm. has not transacted uh, anything. So, effectively, they are not buying oil yes and they're not selling goods selling with goods. Iran. so this, is this is the issue exactly that so they they want a one-sided or mm. a unilateral observance of the JCPOA by Iran yeah while they do not observe they do not observe and I think also that um, uh, Iran is going uh, Trump has used the word Iran is playing with fire you know that is what he has said exactly what Iran is going to do day after tomorrow. If Iran is doing, playing with fire day after tomorrow, then what is Trump going to do? I don't think there is a, uh, anybody is going to buy it that this is a justification for him to order an attack on Iran. And then Iran will incrementally keep on increasing this. This is, if you remember, when the Bush administration was Same thing is history repeating. It, it was, in fact, it started centrifuges, you know, for. 600 yeah. centrifuges, I yeah. think that's all they had. Yeah. And said, 20,000 it came to finally. We'll, we are willing yeah. to freeze. And they said, no, you have to stop completely. Mm -hmm. And then it became, as you said, 3,000, 5,000 to it about mm. 19,000 centrifuges. Yeah, 20,000 uh, centrifuges 20, they had at the time of the deal, deal, you know. And also they upgraded the quality, you know. They and, and also, let's not forget, they had mm. 10,000 kgs mm -hmm. of uh, enriched uranium at the point mm. which they sent to. Uh, Russia. Mm -hmm. Only they retain only 200, 300 kg is essentially 2% mm -hmm. of that. You see, the situation more I see it now, the thing is, um, Trump is, you know, like we began saying that, uh, you know, Trump said, you know, that he can wait and all that. But I have a feeling that you know, he's going to lose face in this. Because uh, um, if Iran doesn't negotiate, he is unable to force them to negotiate. And then on the other hand, uh, as you said very rightly, uh, he is uh, putting a lot of uh, uh, pressure on the Iranians. Their economy is in trouble and uh, they feel the pain. So they will keep counter escalatory measures. They have no know. other risk. They have no other thing. And now, again, that puts pressure on uh, Trump because he is going to face an election. And uh, when this counter escalatory pressures, now, you know, for instance, this Fox News interview I said, there, you know, he has said that, uh, he has disclosed that without, Americans never openly said this, that uh, from a troop level of 16,000 in Afghanistan, he said, I have brought it down already to 9,000. And he said, you know, at one sentence he says that, I just want to get out. I am through with this war. You know, this is a kind of uh, mode in which he is. So in the upcoming campaign time, if this flares up on some front, he will be in trouble. So I have a feeling that uh, he is also really worried. I don't know, I, the Iran that I knew is an Iran which is very pragmatic. And um, uh, they should see that, you know, from the, from the way that he has handled North Korea, the way that he is pulling out troops from Afghanistan, that uh, this man has certain virtues in the sense that he doesn't want a war. 
So why not strike a deal? I don't know what is but going you know on. But the problem that you've already raised, mm. Trump, after having walked out from the deal, mm. what is the deal? You see, you cannot get a better deal than mm. what you had. Mm. As I said, centrifuges dismantled, mm. bulk of the centrifuges mm. are dismantled, inventory brought down, brought down from 10,000 kg mm. to 300 kg. Mm. So what else is left? Also, don't forget dismantling of the reactors. Mm. Okay, So you took out all bomb making capability and Iran readily agreed because mm. they had escalated only because you're not willing to negotiate. Mm -hmm. Now after that, they are actually asking, Trump's as well as Bolton's, they are actually asking, the demands are dismantle all enrichment, nothing. Okay, can't even make your, uh, what is it? Medical isotopes, which you need for various purposes or cancer treatment. Dismantle or rocket making capability. No mm -hmm. missile or rocket making capability. They'll never agree with that. Nobody can. Okay, if you want to be a player in the region and you don't want to be bashed by Israel in the morning and Saudis in the evening, mm. of course you'll have to keep capabilities. Mm. And their capabilities, their entire air force and everything mm -hmm. is far weaker than Saudis or uh, mm -hmm. even the UAE in terms of the defense budget, the missile strength, the aircraft and so on. And then the third is, you must withdraw all your support to Syria, to Hezbollah, and all of that. Now, that is not a demand for negotiation. That's a demand for surrender. Absolutely. And no Iran, no Iranian. That's the whole point. What you said is the whole point. That's why the, it's a jam. You know, in the in, in the sense that you know, um, this man is uh, Trump has blundered into this situation. Absolutely. In my opinion. So that's it's why I keep uh, on saying that you know irrespective of the mm. wishes of mm. the individuals, mm. but the actions are what matters. Mm. And in this case, he took a hammer, mm. sledgehammer, mm. to the deal, mm. uh, which in my opinion, Iran cannot go beyond. Mm. That they had extracted the maximum, the United States yes. extracted the maximum. Clearly, clearly. And therefore, yeah. to ask for them to give up mm. rockets, mm. missiles, mm. is basically to ask it to surrender, because mm. there is no Yes, Even yes, a you said it, you there's said no it. NPT, there is nothing. So there can be basis? no two opinions on that. You know, the the uh, the realistic way should have been to keep this, and Iran was fulfilling the terms of the deal. Absolutely, the 15 I impeccable yeah. report. Impeccable say that. performance. May 31st so report, mm. which is the last report, also said. You exactly see, all this. along, I think there is a point of view in America now, and uh, which is a very significant body of opinion that uh, Iran is possible to constructively engage Iran. You know, this, uh, you see, in, uh, in, the, in, the, in our understanding of the Iranian revolution, credit goes to Indira Gandhi right from that time, you know, that we understood that, you know, that they are open to constructive engagement. Do you know, know all these things, you know, their rhetoric is very, very uh, bad on uh, Kashmir. Uh, when I was in the uh, division in the MEA in the early 90s, you know, when it was a very bad situation there. So once we did a, an, an analysis to know whether there is any Iranian role there, we came up with a finding zero. You know, this is the Iranian and Chechnya, if you look at it, Iran had no role there. It Absolutely. was the Wahhabis and others, you know, who were active there. And Turkey. You know? And in uh, Central Asia. And Turkey. And Turkey. And Central Asia, if you take, for example, the Iranian role is... Uh, Absolutely everything in terms of state-to-state -state relations, people-to-people -people relationships, you know, but nothing in terms of subversive activity, you know. So this you have a Shia population in India. They don't mess around. You Unlike know. what you can say about the Saudis. Yeah. So you see, the thing is, uh, it was possible to constructively engage the Iranians. That you know. is when the United States has essentially, uh, shall we say, has a straight jacket in its thinking that Iran is the main enemy after destruction of Iraq, partial destruction of Libya, I mean of uh, Syria, and of course the destruction of Libya. They see Iran as the key, shall we say, resistance in the region. And for them, it's not that you become our ally or you give up. It's basically either you surrender or we'll destroy you. And this is the kind of policies, because they're not, they're not really going to be able to control Iran, but they can substantially destroy it. And that seems to be the policy that at least explains the last 20 years of American engagement in the, in the region. 
you know, one way of looking at it is that you can say Trump blundered into it, you know, but, you know, he's uh, under enormous, uh, he's under the influence of uh, very wealthy Jewish billionaires. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the Sheldon and others, yes. you know. So, you see, uh, Americans have written, themselves have written about this, that uh, it is because of this kind of irresistible pressure from those quarters that uh, he was pushed into this. But uh, so that's my prop. That's my proposition. Mm. That we look at countries, we have to separate them from the individuals at the end of it, because mm. ultimately the country's policies mm. are the country's policies. Thank you very much, Ambassador, sure. for being mm -hmm. with us, and uh, we hope that we'll engage you with this and other issues, particularly at the moment, because the West Asian scenario mm -hmm. is very tense, and I think we'll have to keep our eye on it for the time being. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. This is all the time we have for News Click today. Do keep watching News Click and visit our website.